Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna show you how to solve equations with integers. Isolate the variable. You are going to hear this so many times when you are learning how to solve equations with integers and solve any equation, really. Isolate the variable just means get the variable on one side of the equal sign by itself. You need to use inverse operations to do that. And when I say variable, I mean the letter. In math, you're going to see a lot of letters, um, sometimes symbols. A variable is a letter or a symbol that represents an unknown number or a select amount, a select value. So in this case, the variable is the T. So when I say isolate the variable, I mean get the T on one side of the equal sign by itself. So in the example T plus 9 equals negative 13. The t is not isolated. The variable is not isolated. In this example, t or the variable is isolated. It's on one side of the equal sign by itself. You need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers to begin this also. Let's move on to example number one. For this example, I'm going to show how I went from t plus 9 equals negative 13 to t equals negative 13 minus 9 from the last slide. I'm going to explain. Those two uh, equations were the same value. I didn't explain that while they were in front of us, but they were. Let me show you what happens. I have got to isolate the variable. So this t right here, I've got to get it on one side of the equal sign by itself. Right now, the only thing that's on the left side of the equal sign with the t is this plus 9. So I need to get rid of this plus 9. If you remember from the slide before, I explained that you must use inverse operations to get rid of things that are with the variable. So inverse operation literally means the opposite operation. So the opposite of adding something would be subtracting something. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. So if right now the t has a plus 9 next to it, to get rid of the plus 9, I need to subtract 9. But I have to do it on both sides of the equal sign. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to draw a subtraction sign in a 9, and I'm going to draw a subtraction sign in a 9. Draw my line. This ends up equaling zero, so there's no point in me writing plus zero, okay? Um, you're going to have this happen every time you're solving for any type of equation. The only thing that's left now on the left side of the equal sign is the t. So I'm just going to bring it down. I'm going to write my equal sign again. And then I'm going to rewrite this. It's going to look like this now. Negative 13 minus... 9. I wrote it like this on purpose because I want you to understand that now you have created your own uh, integer problem. Before you've already learned how to solve um, problems with integers so this is a subtraction problem that has integers in it okay so you need to know the rules for that if you go check out my adding and subtracting integers video, you'll see that I explain how to do that um, by two different ways. One way is by using a number line. The other way is by using, um, for a subtraction problem, add it the opposite method, okay? So, to solve for t, we need to either use a number line to figure out what negative 13 minus 9 is, or we need to use the rule add the opposite. I'm going to do it both ways this time just so it's clear. Um, I'm going to draw a line. Let's see. Okay, so let's add the opposite first. That would turn my problem of negative 13 into plus negative 9. 
and I'm going to put parentheses around my negative 9 just for clarification. If you remember, adding the opposite means change the sign from a subtraction to addition and you add the opposite value. This was a positive 9, so now uh, the opposite of positive 9 is negative 9, so now I'm adding negative 9. Now I need to remember the rules for adding integers which say that when the signs are the same you're going to add like normal and keep the sign the same so 13 plus 9 is 22 and the sign is going to remain the same which is negative so the answer is negative 22 so here I got negative 22 by using the add the opposite method now I'm going to get negative 22 by using the number line method. Draw my number line. I'm going to start at negative 13. That's going to be, let's say, around here. Now, this says I need to subtract 9. If you remember, on a number line, the numbers get larger when you go to the right and they get smaller when you go to the left. So to subtract 9 means I would be taking 9 away. So I'm going to end up with a smaller number. So that means I need to go to the left. How many spaces? 9 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Now I need to figure out what um, point this is. This What position did I end at? So I'm at negative 13. Here's negative 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I end at negative 22. So, however you choose to solve, you're going to get the same thing, which is t equals negative 22. Now I have solved this equation that had an integer in it. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two. Again, I need to isolate my variable. Right now, the only thing that's on the right side of the equal sign with the t is this minus seven. Remember, we use the inverse operation to get rid of things when we're solving equations. And I do want to clarify, we're not truly just getting rid of it. We're actually moving it. We're moving it from the right side to the left side. So, the opposite of subtracting 7 would be adding 7. So, I'm going to add 7 to both sides of my equal sign. You always do it to both sides of your equal sign. I'm going to get rid of this. Just like before, I told you, they're going to cancel out. If I have negative 7 and I add 7 to it, I'm going to end up at 0 if you think about a number line. So on this side of my equal sign, I'm left with just the t. So it looks like we're making good progress um, in order to isolate the variable because right now I only have one thing on this side. Now, over here, I have created a problem for myself, a new um, integers problem that is adding adding two integers so I end up with negative 10 plus 7 I need to remember my rules for adding integers or my number line technique I'm just gonna use the number line technique in my head you need to already know this skill before watching this video if you don't know how to add and subtract integers you need to go check out my video on that because I'm not going into a lot of detail of how to do that here I'm just assuming you know how to do it already but negative 10 plus 7 would be negative 3 and that equals t. So t equals negative 3 and it's okay if it's written forward or backward. Your teacher may say sometimes I want to make sure that you have the variable written first and then the value of that variable afterwards which is fine if that's what your teacher wants. Uh, there's no right or wrong way really. Let's move on to example number three. Example number three. This time my t is touching a negative 20. I need to get it isolated. I need to get it by itself. The relationship that this negative 20 and the t have is multiplication. By having them written like this, this problem is like telling you to multiply these two numbers together. Remember, we must use the inverse operation. So, the inverse operation of multiplication is division. So, I'm going to write my division like this, actually. A line with the thing that I want to divide. 
you may not realize it but fractions are division so when I write something that looks like a fraction like this that is actually division but remember whatever I do to one side of my equal sign I must also do to the other side of my equal sign so I'm gonna divide by 20 over here so these negative 20s cross out and I'm only left with a T over here it is so nice that that works out every time just like I told you when you're doing inverse operations it's always gonna work out so that your numbers that are the same that get repeated just move right along your 100 is divided by 20 and that gives you 5 I haven't mentioned before but you can always take the value of your answer and put it back into your original equation and you will get your answer if you don't that means you've solved incorrectly let me show you what I mean if I were to rewrite my problem negative 20 but instead of writing T actually write the value of what T is which we just calculated it is 5 and now I'm gonna go back to my problem equals 100 I should get the correct answer negative 20 times 5 is negative 100 equals 100 I'm just bringing this part down now I can see there's actually a problem here I have negative 100 here and I have only a regular 100 here there must have been an issue with my negative somewhere so let me double check I divided by negative 20 on this side so I should have divided by that same thing negative 20 on this side oh that's where I made my mistake I did not divide by negative 20 by accident when I did that I would have gotten negative 5 so my answer should actually be negative 5 and what should have happened over here was when I multiplied my negative 20 times negative 5 I should have gotten a positive 100 which would have equaled my positive 100 over here so the answer to example number 3 should actually be negative 5 okay so remember plugging your value back into the problem is always 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 gonna be a smart option to do you can see for this example my negative was left off and I was able to correct my mistake that's always a good thing to do let's move on to example number four example number four I have negative 50 divided by t equals negative 5 okay because of the setup of this problem I'm not going to be able to take just a simple one step with it I'm gonna have to do a couple of steps I cannot um, add 50 to both sides which you may think because this 50 is a negative this is not the same thing as subtracting 50 this is a negative 50 so that's not saying you need to add 50 to both sides what I can actually do here is multiply both sides by the variable itself which is the t so my division of t gets canceled out with my multiplication of t and I have to do that to both sides so now I'm going to end up with negative 50 equaling negative 5 times t but if you remember from our last slide we can actually just write two um, terms next to each other and that's going to represent multiplication so I'm going to write my negative 5 touching my t and that's going to work out fine now because these two are connected by multiplication I can divide by the negative 5 on both sides this crosses out now negative 50 divided by negative 5 is a positive 10 so that equals T so just for clarifications why did I move the T this time and not the variable there's a division sign here I am not able to multiply uh, the 50 on both sides because that would actually change the value of things and remember if I'm ever confused or unsure if the way that I chose to solve was not gonna work I can always plug my answer in uh, to see if I get the correct thing so let me try doing that over here to show you 50 divided by 10 equals negative 5 
if I have negative 50 and I divide 10 I do get negative 5 so I can see that that's correct if I were to let's say add 50 to both sides then I would end up with t equaling a much larger number and negative 50 divided by a much larger number is not going to equal negative 5 so I can see pretty quickly that that's not going to work so for example number 4 your answer is t equals 10 or 10 equals t that was my last example thanks for watching if you like this video don't forget to click like then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials printable video notes worksheets and more